So the purpose of this video is as we move towards using our statistics program to estimate the beta coefficients in our model, we need to have a, a better understanding of how the statistics program actually chooses the model from all of the possible different models that it could choose. And so, so far what we've been doing is we've been thinking about, well, what if we were generating the data from the structural part of our model? And so we were choosing the beta values first, creating the structural part of our model that determined for the different values of our, our variables. For example, we might have, you know, uh, years of smoking, that might be our X1 variable might have age, that might be the x2 variable, and then those variables along with the structural component of our model would determine where that random number generator was located, and then we allowed it to generate one number out of a normal distribution with a zero mean. But when we're actually working with data, we're not starting with a structural part and generating data, we're going the other way around. We're starting with data and we're trying to estimate the structural part. And so how does the model, the statistics program, decide the structural part of the model, which can be abstracted as the orientation of the plane in our vision of the model? So the way the statistics program works for a continuous outcome is different than the way it works for a binary outcome. So linear regression is different than logistic regression. So let's look at linear regression. And so here we have a picture of a lot of data points and we have a structural part of a model, which is this plane. And these red lines, these indicate the difference between the data point and the plane. So these are the numbers that the random number generator has generated for each of these data points. And so we have a red line going from each point down to the plane. And we can see that some, some points are above the plane and some points are below the plane. Now when the statistics program starts out, it only has the data points, and it has to choose the orientation of the plane. So for linear regression, what the statistics program will do is it's going to find the orientation of the plane that minimizes these red lines. And specifically what it's doing is it's taking each of, the, of these red lines and it's squaring them. And then after it squares all of the red lines, it adds all of those values together. And that sum of the squared values of these random components of the model, that's the value that the model is minimizing. And it's finding the orientation of the plane that will minimize that value. And the orientation of the plane is determined by a function. And the function determines the values of the betas. So the beta zero, the beta one, the beta two, and etc. So for linear regression, the estimation procedure is called least squares estimation. And that's because what you're doing is you are minimizing the square of the distance, the sum of the squares of the distances between the actual data points that you have observed from the structural part of your model. So what about for logistic regression? How is the orientation of the structural part of the model determined? Well, you remember the way the structural part of the model is used in a logistic regression is different than in a linear regression. So in a logistic regression, you have a binary outcome. So it's categorical. So it could be yes, no. In my model, it's have COPD or don't have COPD. Um, so let's use that. So remember that the on the left side of the equation, we had the odds of one of the categories in our binary variable. So I'm gonna say the odds of COPD. And you'll remember that that was equal to E raised to the power of the structural part of our model. 
So here there really isn't an error be that we can calculate between the data point that we measure and the value of the structural part of the model as in linear regression. That's because the outcome here doesn't have a value. It's a category. It doesn't have a value. So there's, there's really no distance between two values that we can use here as we would use in least squares estimation. So what's used here is called maximum likelihood estimation. And the way maximum likelihood estimation works is the logistic regression model will find the orientation of the structural part of the model that makes the data that we observed least surprising. So it will maximize the probability that we would have seen the data that we saw. Now the details of it are a little bit more complex than for least squares estimation. So I'm not going to introduce them here, but I will provide a reference for those of you who are interested in understanding how that works at a mathematical level. So the important thing to remember here is just that linear regression is using least squares estimation to find the orientation of the structural part of the model, and logistic regression is using maximum likelihood estimation. Now one thing that both of these estimation procedures have in common is that they are unbiased estimators. And in the next video, we're going to look closer at what that means.